Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to learn about Huffman coding. So, uh, Huffman coding is a algorithm for lossless compression. And it's actually a really cool uh, assignment which incorporates linked lists and binary trees. So the way we're going to start this is we're going to take a string and this is a kind of a classic string to uh, compress. It's M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I -I river and there's a space there. So we have to go through the first process of this is we have to go through each letter and tabulate how many times it occurs. So the M is once, the I is one, two, three, four, five times, the S is one, two, three, four times, and then let's just finish this and then I'll discuss why this is important. So uh, we've done I, we've done S, what about P? P is twice and um, space is once, R is two times and V is once and E is once. So these are all the letters. Now I'm going to sort them based on the number of occurrences. And if I have an equality, in other words if I have two letters that are equal occurrence, I'm going to subsort them alphabetically. So the most popular one is I, then S at 4, and then uh, P and R are both two, but P comes before R, so that one goes first. And then we have uh, space V, E, M at all at one. So alphabetically, now here's the, here's the cool thing about this, it, or the interesting thing is the space should come first. Now why is that? Let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at the ASCII table. So if I go man ASCII, and if I uh, go down and find space, there it is. Okay, so that's uh, decimal number here, 32. That's, that's space. And if you notice, uh, that comes before the alphabet, um, like the smallest, at least capital, is 65. So in C++, when you compare characters, since 32 is less than uh, the alphabet, it's going to come before the other characters. So that this works if you wanted to program it and use the less than operator. Okay, so let's go back to our drawing program here. So therefore, uh, after R, we have space at 1, and then now it's just alphabetical. And let's go full screen here. So we've got E, 1, and then M, 1, and then V, 1, right? Alphabetically, E, M, V are in order. And these are all the characters in the string Mississippi River. Now what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and create a table, a representation of bits to represent th these letters. And we're going to try and use the least amount of bits for the most popular one. So the S and the I are going to be we're going to try to represent them with the smallest amount of bits because they were the ones that occurred the most. So you can have 
com savings in terms of reproducing the string Mississippi River. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do in order to accomplish this is we're going to create a linked list and we'll say i5 that's that's the root node and then the next one is s4 oops uh, let me fix that s4 and then p2 and then uh, r2 and then uh, space one and then E uh, one and then so now I'll just push it over a little bit okay and then we've got uh, M one and then we've got V one okay so at this point what I'm gonna do is I'm going to follow an algorithm to convert the linked list, convert the linked list into a binary tree. And through that binary tree, we're going to create a table of bits representing each of these letters. So what's the algorithm? Well, the algorithm states that you take the last two elements, last two nodes, combine them, and then insert, I should say combine them into a tree, and then insert back into the linked list. So in order to accomplish this, let's think about our struct for a minute. So let's kind of pull this over here. And so what we're going to need from our struct is we're actually, you know, so linked lists have obviously one node pointer in, in them. But in this struct, we're going to need actually a few more things. First of all, we're going to need a string. We'll call it S. That's going to be th these letters. And those, those are going to grow, as you'll see in a minute. In addition, we're going to have to have an integer, which is the number associated with its occurrence. And then we'll have a, so this is our node struct. Okay. But then we're going to have a node pointer called next. So that's just like linked list. But in addition, we're going to have another two node pointers, one for the left child and one for the right child. So it's kind of like a hybrid struct. Um, it's able to store three pointers in this case. Okay, so let's go ahead and follow the algorithm and see where it takes us. Um, now, in order to do this, we're going to use concatenation and addition. So what we're going to do is we're going to traverse to the end of the linked list, and we'll get to V1. And we're going to take that, and we'll have a V. And then we'll have the 1. And then what we're going to do, let's go plus, plus. And, and now we can get rid of that last one. And then we can take the next last one, which is M, and we'll use string concatenation for that and we'll take its value and so this is going to equal VM and that's going to equal 2 and that's going to be our new 
node that we're going to insert back in. So let's continue this process. And so if we do this, let's just create this VM. And so VM is going to be is going to be a tree of of a V1 and a M1. So that's the that's the new tree that we created from these last two guys. So we took both of them out. Now I want to say something. When I say we take them out, we when we write the program for this, we don't actually have to delete these guys. What we really need to do is simply create a new node, this one here. We've created this new node, and we can create its string and integer, right? The string and the integer. Um, values or members of the struct by adding the two previous ones. And we set the children to the existing nodes. So what I mean by existing is we don't have to recreate these two guys because they already exist. All we need to do is right now this one, this last one, right, is pointed to by the next pointer of M. So we have that address. So we can assign that address to the left child of the newly created node. And then here we have this address, which is the next pointer of E, which points to M. And we can assign that one to the right child of the newly created VM node. So that's how you would do it in the code. But let's just work on, right now, let's just work on what do you do after this. So now we're going to insert this back into here. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I wish I could have a bigger screen so I could write things out a little bit better here, but okay, maybe I can start it here. So now we're going to have i5 and S4. Now notice here this this is a VM2. So um, V comes so now the 2, right? You might say, okay, well, the 2 matches this one's a 2, this one's a 2, right? Uh, where should we put it? Well, our rule is that if it is equal to the occurrence, the occurrence takes first precedence in terms of sorting when we insert it back in. But the V comes after R, so therefore it should go after the R. Um, and obviously it has to come before the one of the space. So we would still have P2, R2, I, guess I shouldn't have drawn a line there. R2, there, and then VM2, and then we've got uh, blank one, and, and then we've got E1. Okay, now remember though that this VM2 has stuff hanging off of it. It's a, it's a tree, so it's got three pointers. Now here's one, two, three. And this would be, I, I'm not going to draw them all, but just, just to show that when you put it back in, these things are going to be attached to it. Okay, But that's okay, because only the top node here is going to be in the linked list. So now, again, we do the same algorithm. You take the last two guys, combine them. So when we combine those two, we're going to get E blank. Remember, this one comes first, then the, then the other side, and that's going to be a 2. Okay, And now we put this into here. And this is going to have a, uh, an E on the left, an E1 on the left, and a space 1 on the right. 
and this guy gets put into here now again, and that E is comes before P, but it's still a 2, so it's going to come after the 4. So it would be uh, I5 S4 E space 2, and then we'd have P2, and then finally R2. And, not finally, actually, there's one more guy here, uh, VM2. Okay, now we do the algorithm again. Now we're going to take the last two elements, which is RVM, and put them together which is going to create VMR. Notice how I'm concatenating the strings, okay? This is important. Uh, it's very easy for me to make the mistake of going of, but this isn't necessarily wrong, but this is the algorithm that I'm following here such that I'm consistent in the way that I'm doing this. So I always take the last one first, and because concatenation matters, in other words, a plus B concatenated is AB. B plus A is equal to BA. So concatenation, the way you add things up, matters. But, but arithmetically, it doesn't matter, right? You can see for adding, it doesn't matter the way we add things. So just so that I'm consistent, I'm telling you, we're going to take the... Also, there's another reason for this, too. And that's because, well, in this case, all these twos are equal to each other, right? However, understand that when they're not equal to each other, the one on the right, in other words, the VM, not the R, will always have the smaller number. Now, in this case, it doesn't. But it's, we want the smaller number to be in the left child. That's why when I combine them to make VMR, 4, having now VM on the left and R2 on the right. Now, I, now I've created this tree. Now I need to insert this into the main linked list. So where does that go? Well, it's a 4. So now we need to compare it with the S. Now V comes after S. So it would be to the right of the 4. So we'd have I5, S4, and then VMR4. I'm not going to write the its children here, because it, it's I'll do that at, at the end. And then to the right of VMR, we've got E space 2 and P2. Okay, so uh, now when I do the algorithm again, and I take the last two guys, I'm going to have PE space. Remember, once again, the last node string comes first. And then this is going to be a 4, if I move this up a, bit, a little bit here. Um, now the children of that, right, because 2 plus 2 is 4, is going to be, uh, oops, no, that's not right. P2, oops, let me write that properly. That looks like an R. P2, there we go. And then E space 2, there we go. So now we take this guy and we put it in. Now, in this situation, now these are the, we've got a few fours here, but P, P comes before S, so it's going to go in the middle here. So let's go ahead and draw that. Oops. Let's go ahead and draw that one. Let me move things over a little bit. Okay. Uh, so we're going to have I5, and then we'll have uh, PE space. Four, and then we'll have S4, and then we'll have uh, VMR4. 
Okay, and now those last two guys are gone. Okay, so now we're gonna take the last two character, last two nodes again, and add them up. And in this case, when we add them, we're gonna start with the last one, VMR four. Uh, sorry, VMR S, and this is gonna be an eight. Okay, and that's going to have an S4 on the left and a VMR4 on the right. And now this is going to get inserted into here. Now 8 is bigger than 5 or 4, so it's going to come at the beginning. Okay, let's erase that for a sec. Always having trouble moving the board. Okay, so now. We're going to start off with VMRS. OK, I made a mistake. I have to correct this. So let's go back here. What I did wrong is I put this guy on the right-hand side. I shouldn't have done that. That should have been on the left-hand side So, because I have to be consistent here. So let's try erasing some things. And now let's try and fix this. So. It's easy to kind of lose track of what you're doing, but you, you have to stay focused here. So the here in this case, um, my VMR is going to be on the left, and that's a 4. And my S is going to be on the 4, is going to be on the right. OK, so now I have to insert this. So let's go I5. And then, now, oops, sorry, no, 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 back up, back up, back up. We don't have I5. VMRS is 8. So that comes first. And then we're going to have I5. And then we're going to have PE space 4. Okay. So now let's take the last two guys again. Add them up, and we're going to have PE space I 9, and that's going to have children PE space 4 and I 5. And now we want to insert this guy in. And so when we insert this guy in, the 9 is going to come before the 8. So it's going to be PE space I uh, 9. And then we're going to have VMRS 8. And now, since we've only got two left, we just do the algorithm one last time. And now we can start writing our uh, final binary tree. So our final tree is going to be a combination of these guys. So uh, we're going to take VM RS PE space I. That's going to be our root node for our binary tree. And that's going to be 17. Now we're going to go left. And we're going to have VMRS8. And on the right, we're going to have PE space I9. And now the PE space 9 is going to be broken up into here. You can see it uh, PE space 4 and I5. And then the VMRS8 was over way over here. Okay, so that's VMR4 and S4. So let's move it again. VMR, oops, 4 and S4. Okay. Now I've just got a 
few more left to do. I've got to split up the VMR and I have to split up the PE space. Okay, so the PE space is a P2 and an E2 or an E space 2. Okay, so here's my P2 and here's my E space 2. Now this guy's going to break down even further. Let's go find out. Uh, actually, I know what this one is. I remember this one was a E1 and this one was a space 1. And then I have to go see what my VMR was. Okay, so my VMR is uh, VM2R2. Okay, so this is uh, VM2 and an R2. And so now, the last thing that I have to split up is the VM, and that's, that's a V1 and an M1. So now what I'm going to do is I'll change color and I'm going to put down uh, zeros and ones for every left and right so I can barely fit this thing in there it just kind of fits in right now um, so watch this okay so every time I go left off the root node I'm going to write a zero so right here there's a zero and there's a one there's a zero and there's a one. There's a zero and a one. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. And so now what I'm going to do is, if I have enough room, I'm going to create the table for all of my letters. Uh, starting with the most popular letter, I had I, and then I had S, and then I had, I think, P, and then R, and then I think I had space, and then I had uh, E, M, V. Okay, so starting from the root node, which is at the very top, for I, all I have to do is go 1, 1. Now, if you think about what that means is, so this string, this string at the top here has every single letter in it. So what we would do is we would say, does the left node have an I in it? No. Does the right node have an I in it? Yes. So that means we would go to the, you know, walk or traverse to the, to the right node, but we'd also put down a one to start the code for the I. Then we do the same thing again when we're at PE space I node, we would say does the left hand node does the left hand node have an I? No, the right hand does. So therefore I is one one, right? So to get to I, you go you have to traverse on the tree and go right right. So that's one one. For the S, you'd go zero one. Okay? For the P, you'd have to go one zero zero. For the R, you'd have to go zero zero one. For the space, uh, you'd have to. Now we need to push this up a little bit. Okay. So for the space. Um, we need to go, let's see, where is it? Here it is. So it'd be one, zero, one, one. Okay? And then for the E, we would have one, zero, one, zero. And for the M, we'd have zero, 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 one. And for the V, we'd have 0, 0, 0, 0. OK? Um, now that we have this table, we can now write out Mississippi River again 
but using these bits. So for the M, for the Mississippi, it would be 0, 0, 0, 1. And then for the I, it's 1, 1. And then for the S, it's 0, 1. And then for the S, it's 0, 1. And then for the I, again, it's 1, 1. M-I-S-S-I-S-S, -S -S, right? 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on and so forth. You could Now, you might say, okay, what's the purpose behind this? Well, now what you can do is you can treat these zeros and 1 as bits, and if you take the first 8, so let's say we take, there's 4, here's 6, here's 8. Here's 8 bits. So let me show, what, show you what happens. If I get a calculator going here, and I kcalc, and I now go to um, type in this binary number. So if I go to binary and go 0, 0, OK, so I can't do, doesn't matter the front zeros, but it's 8 anyways. So it's 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. There it is, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. Now if I convert that to decimal, I get 29. So, so now, if I go to my ASCII table, and I go to the decimal 29, there's, de there's the decimal here, right? So 29 is group separator. It's, it's some ASCII value, not important. But it's essentially now, since we're writing in binary, we can write that ASCII character to the, the file as a representation that, so now think about this. This, this, is, this was three bytes in total, and now these three bytes, which was MIS, now we're able to represent that with only one byte, which is the ASCII value 29 decimal 29. So the, the group separator character. So, so we end up having a big savings. Um, I think the compression for this is, it's actually around somewhere around 50% or so. Um, just remember, we had 17 characters to begin with in Mississippi River. And I think we end up with uh, 146 uh, bits. So, sorry, that's not right. Uh, that's actually 46 bits. So, 46 bits. Now we can't we can't have a number that is uh, not a, a, a factor of eight because. 8 bits is equal to, 8 bits equals 1 byte, okay? So we, the smallest thing we can write to memory is 1 byte. So therefore, we, we have to kind of figure out a, a bookkeeping method to say, hey, we only have 46 bits in Mississippi River. So you'll have to do a little bit of juggling at the end to make sure that it fits perfectly uh, into a factor of 8. However, the point being here is that we've done a pretty good compression because, so 17 times 8 bits, that's 136 uh, bits. And so we, we've compressed it down to somewhere around 46 because, like I said, we're going to have some padding and bookkeeping. And the other thing which we're going to need to store in this file, obviously, is this table. So we're going to have to store the table. Now the table might seem like it's going to take up a lot of space and undo the amount of safe uh, space that we have saved. However, remember, Usually when you compress things, you're not going to be compressing two words, Mississippi River. It's going to be much bigger than that. And so the table's actually not going to take up much room comparatively. 
So, um, of course, now, right, if you wanted to undo or decompress this, you would simply take the first character, which is your ASCII character 29, convert it into binary, and you'd get the 00011101. Zero, 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 one, 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 zero, one. Okay, now what would you do with this? Well, you start reading the stream. So you say to yourself, okay, do we have a character that's that says just a zero? No. How about zero, zero? No. How about zero, zero, zero? Zero, zero, zero doesn't match any of these. So what about zero, 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 one? Well, that, that matches the M. And so now you know, as soon as you have one match reading the stream of bits, that now becomes your M. Let's continue reading. The next, so notice there's no stop or start bits necessary. The next one's a one. Well, nothing matches a one. What about one one? Yep, that matches an I. So now you know your second character is an I. Continue. Zero, nothing matches zero. What about zero one? Yes, I have a match here in S. So now I know my third character is an S. And essentially, um, oh, no, hold on. Okay, no, that was right. It's just that this was my third character, right? So those are the ones that they match to. So that's my uh, description of Huffman coding. And this, is, this isn't really the code for how to do it. It's not the C++ code, but rather the algorithm for generating the, the table for all the characters and how you convert the linked list into a binary tree.